everyone, it's Tanya Evoy here from the Evoy Real Estate Team and Remax Affiliates. And I am here today to talk to you about how do you know what updates you should be making before you sell your home. So this is a very common question that we get. And I think it's important to focus on some things and be aware of what you shouldn't be focusing on because your timeline could be you know, a month from now, a year from now even. And really, if you're looking at homes, you're gonna start thinking, okay, what do I need to do to my house to make it ready for the market? So I'm here today on this episode of Tanya Talks Real Estate to talk to you about that. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. I'm absolutely happy to connect and um, I hope I can answer some of those questions for you here today. So happy Thursday, uh, the sun's shining, it's a beautiful day and it's fall. So the uh, fall market is in full swing. We're actually still dealing with a bit of a spring market, which is incredible. So um, we're going to talk to you today, and I'm looking forward to connecting with you again if you have any questions. So the first thing that you need to do is check the condition of your, of your home right now. So you want to leave your house and kind of walk in as if you're a buyer, and you're going to kind of look around for little things that, um, that somebody might pick apart in the home. So when we live in our house, oftentimes we just think, okay, well... You know, there's this doorknob issue or the torn screen or whatever. Those little things really are where you need to focus your attention first and foremost. So landscaping projects, um, boosting the curb appeal, things like that. Those are little things that you can do that are not a huge um, investment, but they can make a massive impact. So that's where you need to focus first. Looking at the overall condition and, you know, your home might just need like a few coats of paint and the main like living areas and that can make a big difference as well so just touching up paint things like that that's the first thing that you want to focus on the second is you want to check out the competition because a lot of times um, we have people that will go into the home you know as an example the house is worth about three hundred thirty thousand three hundred fifty thousand dollars and the houses in the neighborhood are selling right around that amount well if you end up going in and redoing a whole entire kitchen and spending sixty to seventy thousand dollars which would be a crazy kitchen but let's just say you did that then you're clearly not going to get that money back if the average sale price in your area is three four three fifty whatever so you just have to really know the area know the competition um, on the flip side if you know your home is um, lacking some of the updates that a lot of the houses in your area have then that's a good area to focus on so you know if you know that there's a brand new subdivision going in in behind your home and your house is going to be compared to brand new homes then you might want to look at some of the higher end finishes right if it's justified in the type of home that you have. So this would be a good time to bring in a professional, try to figure out what's going on in the neighborhood, what your timeline is, and sort of what's planned and what you can expect the competition to look like, right? So we have a fantastic stager that we recommend. She can come in and go room by room and, you know, just giving you update ideas. Um, I mean, obviously there's Pinterest too, but having a personal opinion for somebody to come in and say, this is what you can do to your home. And this is really going to help to um, pop the features in the kitchen or the bathroom, that sort of thing. That's another good place to start. So we can certainly help you with that as well. Um, and then, you know, just making sure you don't over renovate. That's probably the key factor because when you know the competition, you know sort of what your um, your price point is and spending an exorbitant amount of money on granite upgrades or granite kitchen. If it's not, you know, something that's going to compare in your neighborhood, then that's really a bad investment. So it's something you don't want to do. Um, and then the next thing is knowing the return on investment for your projects, right? Because um, you want to get the most bang for your buck and sometimes you don't necessarily have to do the things that you're thinking that we talked about. So according to um, the 2019 Remodeling Impact Report, the top return on investment um, projects that you can do are new roofing, which uh, returns 107% of your investment. So that's not a big shocker because a roof is, I mean, obviously it's preventing your house from leaking, but it's it's also something that people are like well should i do it now or should we just wait and let the the new buyers do it the answer is no definitely do it if it needs a new roof it's going to come up on a home inspection and people love knowing that that's done right whether for so many reasons i mean we've worked with a lot of buyers and a roof they tend to sometimes exaggerate the cost of things and and it can be um, an obstacle to overcome when you're selling your home so go ahead and do that the other thing is new hardwood floors 
So when you're putting down um, new flooring, a lot of people are like, well, what's the best type of flooring to put down? I mean, obviously, Easy Care Laminate, they've got a lot of really good options now, but hardwood floor is still the best return on investment. So according to this report, it's 106% return on investment. So that's significant, you know? And then the other option is if you wanted to refinish the flooring, um, getting a professional in to do that, obviously you can only refinish your floor so many times that they've already been done. Um, it's hard to say. So you're going to want to get a professional opinion, but the return on investment for refinishing hardwood floors is 100%. So those are the types of things that not everybody's going to want to take on, right, when they buy a new house. And it's really important to know what you're putting your money into. So if those floors are in rough shape, definitely tackle them. And then make sure to weigh the cost of the workload versus the payoff. Um, if you're doing it yourself and you're a professional or you know you can do jobs, obviously you don't want to take them on if you don't know you can do them, but um, you know, really weighing out what the cost of it's going to be because if you're, again, putting in a huge amount of workload and it's only going to get you another couple thousand dollars for your house, is that really something that you want to take on, right? So sm focusing on some uh, smaller cosmetic upgrades is always a good idea, even just like purging and reorganizing those are all things that that are really common that we have to tell sellers to do anyway so they can make a huge impact and um, and can give you a really good feeling when the buyers walk into the house so of course when we list properties we're uh, meeting with you uh, you're consulting with a stager and they're giving you a whole list of things to do anyway but this is a good place to start if you're looking to possibly sell your home in the future and where should you be spending your money on upgrades so thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you watching and um, please tune in next week. We're going to be talking about what to expect when you're home inspecting. So this is a COVID edition because right now home inspections are a little bit different. Um, the market's a little bit different and obviously the pandemic has impacted a lot of things. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what buyers can expect during a home inspection now. And as always, please feel free to reach out if you have any questions and if you'd like like to receive notifications when we go live, you're, um, you just follow our business page here at eBoy Real Estate Team and then uh, you go up to the top corner, turn on follow the page and you'll receive notifications. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful Thursday and we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.